Breaking news, an appeals court judge rejecting Trump's bid to pause the Trump Organization fraud trial. But the judge did agree to temporarily halt the process of breaking up Trump's businesses. This is a former top Trump Organization deputy testified to fraud on the witness stand today. Jeff McConney is his name. He's the former controller and a co-defendant, testifying that he significantly inflated the valuation of Trump properties and that he did so, and what we heard today, at the direction of Eric Trump, Trump's son. According to McConney, he was told by Eric to include the value of seven homes when valuing a development called Seven Springs, even though those homes were not even built. McConney also testifying that he continued to value Trump's Briarcliff Manor Golf Club at $101 million for four years. The appraisal was less than half of that value. So why did he do it? McConney says Eric Trump told him to, quote, leave value as is. Out front now, a former lawyer for Donald Trump, Michael Cohen. He is the author of Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics. He is also the host of the Mea Culpa and Political Beatdown podcast. So, Michael, I really appreciate your time, and you know more about what they're talking about in this courtroom right now than, than anyone. So um, this major development in uh, t uh, Trump's own lawsuit against you also happened today, and I do want to ask you about that. But first, this Eric, uh, what McConney said today about Eric Trump. How much trouble is Eric Trump in right now, do you think? Well, it sounds like it could be a lot. Um, you know, the fraud doesn't start and stop with Donald Trump. It also now, of course, goes to the children. Uh, it was Alan Weisselberg. It was also Jeff McConney. So, yeah, I do think that the statements that were made by Jeff McConney uh, are certainly injurious to not just the Trump Corporation, but to Eric as well. And of course, you, you know uh, McConney and you, you know all these individuals involved. You worked with all of them. And, and McConney also testified yes. that he and Alan Weisselberg, you mentioned him, the former chief financial officer, agreed to calculate the value of apartments at Trump Park Avenue uh, without saying that the units were rent stabilized, which of course uh, significantly lowers the value. And that he calculated Mar-a-Lago's valuation as if it could be sold as a private res residence. Meanwhile, he didn't know that Trump had deeded away the right to do that, right? So that it had to stay a social club. It could not have that private residence value. When you look at all this, Michael, and given what you know of every one of these individuals and how all these things were done because you were in these rooms, is it possible Trump was in the dark for all of this? No, and I think that McConaughey also made a statement uh, to the extent that Donald Trump had the ultimate sign-off on the documents. I also believe that uh, Donald Bender from Mazers uh, stated the same exact thing. Uh, I mean, look, I also testified before the House Oversight Committee and said the exact same thing as well, that everything that happened at the Trump Organization happened at the direction and with the explicit knowledge of Donald J. Trump. And, and you were, and that's, by the way, uh a big part of the reason why this case is happening right now is because of what you said in that room, specifically referring to valuations and, and, and then Trump getting loans from Deutsche Bank. Now, Attorney General Letitia James, obviously Trump's repeatedly attacked her, as you know, but she put out a video statement late last night about the case. I wanted to play it for you, Michael. The defendants like to act as though this case is very complicated, when in fact the fraud they committed is simple. Donald Trump often calls his business perfect and beautiful, but it's clear that when it comes to running a company, he doesn't care about the real numbers or the facts. As I said, Michael, you know, you're, you're likely to be a witness here. You're on the list. They, they all want to hear from you. Are you confident that from what you know and saw that you can link Donald Trump directly to this very clearly established pattern that the judge has accepted, a pattern of fraud with your testimony? The answer is yes. Uh, I don't want to, at this point in time, go into how I will have that established or uh, the extent to which the attorney general's office will be questioning me. Uh, but I can assure you that, as I had stated once again uh, before the House Oversight Committee, everything that happened at the Trump Organization happened with the direct knowledge and at the direction of and ultimately signed off by Donald J. Trump. There's no way for him to escape this. So you have more examples. You got the receipts. Yes, and actually the receipts are in the hands of the attorney general. 
All right, yeah. and, 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 and we literally, right? All right, well, we also learned late last night, yeah. um, I wanted to mention this lawsuit against you. So Donald Trump had this lawsuit against you, Michael, if viewers don't know. It was $500 million he was suing you for. He dropped it. He dropped it four days before he was scheduled to be deposed in the case. Now, he had claimed that you breached your obligations as his confidant and his lawyer by publishing books and, you know, with your podcast and media appearances like this one. But again, four days before his deposition, he drops his $500 million lawsuit against you. Why do you think he did that? Well, he certainly demonstrated that he didn't want to be deposed uh, by Donya Perry, uh, my attorney, uh, or uh, her team. He certainly was concerned that some of the information that he may have to testify to, because it was an expansive uh, testimony, that it could ultimately implicate him in crimes and that he then earlier needed Chris, uh, Chris Kyes to prevent him from uh, implicating himself and being able to then assert the Fifth Amendment. This is the craziest scenario. Everybody acknowledges that it was retaliatory for uh, my participation uh, with the Manhattan District Attorney case. It was done to harass me. It was done to financially harm me. Uh, and ultimately what we did is we decided that we were going to accept the complaint and we were going to press him for his deposition. As we expected, he certainly didn't want to do that because the second Donald Trump opens his mouth, he implicates himself in something. He's not a good witness by any stretch of the imagination. And he had no interest whatsoever in being deposed by myself uh, or by my counsel. All right. And that lawsuit, of course, dropped. Michael, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's good to see you. All right.